Last week on Sailing Zephyr, we finally reveal our plans to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Fiberglass repairs get underway, as well as some much needed dinghy maintenance. And we get to celebrate James's birthday with an amazing feast. This week, as fiberglass works continue on Zephyr, all hands are on deck as we get Zephyr ready for the Atlantic crossing. So what he's going to do here is he's going to add six layers on top of what he's already done. So um, starting with the smallest layer, he's going to build out. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and they basically progressively get bigger. Um, yeah, that's the plan. So those are the six layers there. And you can see he's already traced them out, cut them all out. And they basically, I, think, I can't remember what the percentage is, but they essentially, you know, they're X amount of percent larger than the original, the, the piece below it. So um, the smallest piece you can see is about that big. And then the largest piece is this whole thing here. <laughs> Whilst the fiberglassing is happening inside, I get outside and start repainting the teeth.
Well, what we thought was the end of our water pressure problems uh, is not the end of our water pressure problems. So, um, yes, again, while Natalie was having a shower, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we heard an almighty bang and the water pressure pump had not turned off and subsequently one of the, the hose that attached to the accumulator tank blew. I guess that was the weakest point, well, the valve did. Um, and I've since discovered that, it, from the people I've been talking to, that it's this regulator switch, and basically it wasn't regulating. It wasn't. It wasn't. You know, it wasn't shutting off. You know, when it reaches a certain uh, pressure, um, ours is rated to 40 psi. It should then um, stop, stop pumping, turn off the pump, and they apparently have a tendency to go. So I'm replacing that right now. I've pulled the old one off. I'm just putting the new one uh, back in. Um, I'm going to replace the T valve that goes to the accumulator tank and hopefully I connect up the wires correctly and then we should be back rock and rolling. Um, and we've kind of had ongoing water pump, water pressure issues for it since we really had the boat. So um, it could have been that this was literally just sort of failing on, and on its way out. So we shall see. That's our accumulator tank, and this uh, this hose here, which is attached to the water accumulator tank, that is what failed, obviously. I guess that was the weakest point. So I have some new T-valves. So I will install a new one of those, and hopefully it will be good to go. And it looks like I've got some water to mop up in the village as well. As the day comes to an end and we think we can relax, we discover that the accumulator tank is fully rusted out. So the saga of the uh, water pressure system continues. Um, as you guys might have remembered earlier, I had to change a I had to change a, uh, a regulator on the pump, which was great. So that solved the problem of uh, overpressurizing the uh, system. Um, but what I've discovered is our accumulator tank is rusted out and is actually delivering rusty water through our system, which Nat and I sort of uh, thought was maybe a different issue. So what I've done is I've actually got a new accumulator tank. Um, so I'll replace this old, old metal one and I'll put this plastic one in and it's actually got these neat little connector valves already built in. So um, yeah, hopefully that should solve the problem. And hopefully is the last issue with our water pump system and we can put it to rest. So. so this is the accumulator tank for the water pressure that has been the bane of our existence <laughs> because it has been rusting and we didn't know this but that's what's obviously been causing the yellow water. Um, and we thought it was due to pipes breaking and stuff like that but apparently it was this bad boy all the time because it's not actually stainless steel and it's quite old probably as old as the boat wouldn't you say James? It probably came with the boat so it's what nine years old. So this is our jobs list here and it continues over on to the next page there so we've got quite a lot of things to do since we arrived and getting ready for our Atlantic crossing. While we're getting through the jobs um, and the fiberglass is happening still, there's also a lot of stuff that we had to buy. Um, so that's our list that we had to buy um, just for general safety on the boat. Life jackets that had a harness that you could rope yourself in and um, just a bunch of other stuff, new flares that we should have had bought those um, sail repair kit so that when we're underway if anything was to happen just a bunch of stuff like that that we needed to get so that was we're still going through that now but anyway slowly getting there and then the other thing is the menu for our crossing so I'm gonna do about five weeks worth so that we don't want run out of food um, and I'm just planning every meal it doesn't necessarily have to be in that order but obviously I want to get through the fresh stuff first 
um, in the first two weeks and then the rest will be, as the trip goes on, it will start to be canned goods and tuna and that kind of stuff. So I just want to plan so that we've got a meal for five weeks, prepared breakfast, lunch and dinner and snacks, fruit, all that kind of stuff. So that's my job for today. Babe, did you just fart? No, the toilet did. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nat's been pressing me to do this for a while now. Um, I changed all the piping, but the joker valve, which is a, a one-way valve, when you pump, and it actually pumps, oh. when it pumps the waste out, it goes through a valve that's sort of shaped like that and it pushes it through and the valve's meant to close like that to stop it from coming back up but the fluid that valve's obviously not working because the toilet fills back up with fluid and then it, it smells so I get the excellent job of doing it so this is the old joker valve as you can see it's pretty like the, there's gaps and everything so I think that's how the fluid's coming back and this is the new one and you can see it's snug so we'll change it over and see if that makes a difference one of our other jobs today is to strap the boards up onto the solar arch. So um, for the crossing, that's what we're going to do because instead of having it inside or on the side, just to make a bit more room, um, we're going to do that, especially now that my brother's coming. So there's going to be four people on the boat. So we've got them up there. And James is just having a look to see where he's going to strap the boards to. They take up a lot of space, actually. You'd think we have a paddleboard here, but we don't. <laughs> it's just I'm still learning, so I've still got a 7-6 board, so it's pretty big. Boards are all set up there. Gave us a bit more space inside. So, tape measures in the center console. Back here. So let's test the front of the boat. 4.6, 4.5. So we're just checking the depth. Do not try this at home, kids. <laughs> the verdict is we've got we are not touching. We got the seven. We got eight inches spare. Yeah, but our depth meter said that we were touching. Because our depth sounder is just in front of the keel, so the depth from where the under the bottom of the hull where the keel starts. So from there to the water line is the depth of water that it's not being accounted for. So you can build an offset into your depth depth sounder, from what I understand. But I don't know. I think we still I think we still operate on a uh, we don't go in anything less than uh, six and a half feet of water. He's actually not doing any of that. He's just planking. Yeah. <laughs> How much have you done so far? I've done the starboard side and I've done these two rails here. I'm really enjoying it, it's quite therapeutic. My granddad taught me how to paint, so I'm pretty good at this. I'm better than James at it. The following day, once fiberglass resin is dry, it is sanded down before the gel coat layers go on. Alright guys, so as you can see behind me here, they finished the new chain plate, they fiberglassed it, gel coated it, um, it's all locked in now. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to remove the chain plate cap um, from the top side and I'm going to re-bed the chain plate cap with some sealant and so forth. And then I'll just sort of loosely put that down and then tomorrow I'll cinch it down um, and then I'll install the tie rod tomorrow and then the Rigging guys will be coming, uh, I think, just before lunch or just after lunch, and to retune the rig, and then we should be done with the chain plate issue. So pretty stoked. So yeah, so we're gonna head upstairs, pull off the cap, and uh, get it all cleaned up and ready to reseal. 
Uh, so this is our chain plate cap here. As you can see, um, there's some red tape on there from the riggers. I'm going to basically remove that cap and re-bed it. So that's the next step. There we go. So you can see that was the old sealant there. Um, one of the things I realized when I did it, I actually didn't put nearly enough. Um, the guys were explaining to me that this, you literally just glob it on so that it's you know, completely full. So when you bet it, you get no leaks. So we were actually getting some leaks because I didn't put enough on this the first time. But we've learned our lesson. So. So I'm scraping off the old silicone because I'm about to re-bed this. So as you can see, I've just loosely put the shackle on and it's just sort of hanging below. I've pushed the pin through and this is only just sort of screwed in maybe one or two threads. Um, so the way the system works is you hand tighten the tie rod until you can't hand tighten it anymore and then it just gets a three-quarter turn with the uh, with a monkey wrench so or a spanner depending on where you're from. So I'll start to put that all together now and then when I'm finished I will put a, um, a split pin through here and connect the ground. So the last thing we need to do is I need to reinstall all of the plumbing, the sink and stuff like that. So I'm going to put the sink in um, and then I'm going to reconnect all the plumbing. I've got our waste pipe that goes to our double sink. We've got the hot and cold water lines um, which are here and we'll connect here. I've got the ground that goes to the tie rod shackle. And then we also have a pump that sits here which pulls out uh, water from the bottom of the fridge. So I'll reconnect that. I'll turn the water on, turn the water pump back on. and. Just run everything, make sure it doesn't leak, and uh, yeah. Um, if you've seen our earlier videos, yes, it is deja vu. This is happening again, uh, but hopefully this is the last time. They've done a great job on the chain plate. Um, it's about twice as strong as it should be, um, so I have no doubt it's going to hold for many, many, many years to come. So, um, this, as I said earlier, the shackle is only in just loose at the moment. Because I've bedded the, the chain plate cap, um, I've been told to not tighten it down too much because you want the, um, the silicone to sort of cre uh, harden a little bit and then tomorrow morning I'll then tighten it down extra tight um, because if you do it super tight right away then it just squeezes all of the silicone out and then um, there's not much left to actually seal the chain plate cap. So you let it harden a little bit and then um, in the morning I'll then really tighten it down and then that way there's enough in there so it creates like a nice seal. So, see how we go, guys. My brother's arriving in a couple of days, um, so we haven't got much time left to get everything done. Thankfully, the fiberglass him finished yesterday. They painted it, and today the rigging guys from FKG came to the boat and put our rigging all back together. So, pretty much everything's done. We're just trying to tick off any last jobs that we have. Trying to get Marcus's room set up, my brother's room set up. Um, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be put away, um, wetsuits and stuff that we're not going to use needs to go and um, we're kind of using that front room, the Beaver Earth, as a kind of storage so we need to get rid of a lot of stuff. So that's our plan for today. Just getting the last few things done um, for that bedroom. We've got everything out, we're both sweating because it's raining and everything has to be closed so it's absolutely boiling hot in here um, but I've just literally wiped down that room and now I've just got to make the bed so but everything's everywhere. <laughs> well as Nat cleans the front room I've been working on storing everything in the back lazarette uh, we'll reorganize in the back lazarette. We've got our spare anchors, fenders, everything you can think of lives back there. Um, and just trying to make access to the water maker system um, better as well by organizing our storage just so that I can change the tanks when I need to. Um, but as you guys all know, 
you gotta create a mess to make it clean, right? So uh, here, go and check it out now. It's pretty crazy. Everything is everywhere. We got all our wetsuits, which is like, I think we have about three or four wetsuits each. Uh, all fenders, well, some of the fenders, and uh, those are our primary dock lines and some spare hosing and so forth. Power cables, hose. Tie that off as a stern line to something. Got a pile of extra ropes here that I found in the bottom of the boat. Let's have a look. So we got two spare anchors. We got a fortress, and I don't know what this other one's called, but it's massive. We've got 100 foot of chain and another 200 foot of uh, line. And then the other one, it's got chain and line as well. And then we stored some other stuff under there that we don't need to get to. And now I'm gonna start filling up the lazarette. So this is a uh, part of our water maker system. That's the primary charcoal filter. That's the 20 micron and then the five micron. And then over here, I've got this nifty box that actually covers the spectra um, system itself, the uh, high pressure pump and all that. So, and then the water travels down through our lines, and that's where our selector valve's there. So I got tank one on the left and tank two on the right. And basically, it's just a matter of switching these little valves right here. Just finished my brother's bedroom. I feel like I've lost 50 pounds just from the sweat, but here it is. Woohoo! Hopefully, you'll be pretty comfy there in the beaver. We just did a quick shop. And now we're off to get Marky. Ah! Come on, my legs. I know, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. Let's go get your brother. Go, 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 go. Nearly. <laughs>
How many pairs of shorts is that? Huh? Bed sheets. <laughs> she put bed sheets in. Yeah. Oh, they're lovely bed sheets. Son los tuyos. Oh wow. Well, that's good because we bought some rubbish ones from it. Yeah, no one's using these. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have sweaty one month on these sheets. Next week is our last week in St. Martin before we head off across the Atlantic. So we get to work on completing all the jobs and put Marky to work. However, we do take some afternoons off to show Marky the site.